original sense, not original sin, of paradise at point, origin, Genesis 1, 1, a Aleph. The secret to happiness as early success is the same as of happiness for celestial salvation. Forget about being held back anymore by original sin, for the sky is the limit with paradise as original sense. What we're referring to is if it was GD sent or was it of our own making. Gottfried Leibniz coined the concept of theodicy in 1710. His thesis was that this is the best of all possible worlds, all things considered. The dilemma is that the creator of creation is good. If this is the case, then how come there is evil in the world? But this, but this just can't be because the God of creator of everything is all good. The problem is in our minds and not outside in the world. I'm a science teacher, but this doesn't disenfranchise me. Like in what could I possibly know not being a theologian? I'm like the hedgehog knowing only the belly button of the Torah Bible to be Genesis 1-1, Aleph or Paradise, and not like the fox knowing all the Tanakh Bible, including small print details. All I really need is a copy of the Torah teaching. Is there or isn't there evil in the world? And if so, when's its origin? That is the question. If the answer is no, then how come there is so much suffering? If it's yes, then the nude question persists. In either case, we're back to square one. My novel approach is paradise, and I cling to it as the only thing I know. If it's casuality, simply an accident of nature, it will be peshat, plain, p. On the other hand, if it's causality, an act of the divine, it will be the large discovered d. However, there's also the remiss remit solution out of the dilemma of the maze. Let's quickly review. If causality is nature P, if causality it's divine D. However, there's also culture R as hypotenuse, standing as it were on the shoulders of nature, real horizontal axes, all the while holding fast to the soul of divine imaginary vertical axes. The reason why I find this novel approach of Triad PRD 1 as encouraging is that it's tailored to fit us as shadow to a figure, as me and I. We are body P, mind R, spirit D as living being S. Thus, matches one to one with a paradise model. Briefly, it unfolds as body Peshat plane, mind remis remit R, spirit derived discover D, life sought secret S. Let me tell you what my problem is. Being a believer in Revelation, I cannot possibly accept evil as originating in the Creator GD. But I'm also a physicist and philosopher by training. We were created on the sixth day of the creation story in Genesis 1, 26, 28, and had a soul blown into us in the second creation story, Genesis 2, 7. This makes us enthusiasts, quote, creative creatures, meaning having GD in us. As rationalists, I simply cannot accept mystical explanations of world phenomena. That is, I find the credences of the Messiah, Savior, and Mashiach anointed in the Christian and Jewish tradition quite superfluous. With all due respect, my position isn't heretical. It's just that I've learned early on to use Occam's razor to research the most economical, not the most expensive, solution to a problem. The Messiah Mashiach explanation is born out of an abundance of fear or caution. My hierarchy of source is direct reading from the Torah teaching. The idea is simply that the Nakh Bible is such that the Torah teaching was revealed to Moses. Nevi'im prophets was inspired. Ketuvim writings were enlightened. And composition thereafter is interesting reading material. It's first hand, second hand, third hand, and so on. Outside the Torah teaching, everything is second hand knowledge. By derived is meant man made, as if in made up out of raw materials going back to the Torah of Revelation. While the Messiah Mashiach may refer to the end of times, this doesn't relieve us of our responsibility to deliver a paradise on earth in the meantime. The problem with this notion of MM is that it is not referred to in the Torah. This means that if it wasn't passed down from Adonai to Moses, then it must have been manufactured down the road by overseas followers. Like a copy of a copy, closely resembling the real thing, which could be a forgery passing on for the authentic primeval in triad parts PRD one whole less. My knowledge is pretty much limited to the Torah, specifically Genesis 1, 1 to 2, 3. 
managing a few pages is doable, whereas a whole Tanakh Bible is a different matter altogether. If you can pay attention to what you're reading, you'll find plenty of low-lying fruit to keep alive. The good news is that that's all you need to know to succeed and be saved. Knowing more cuts both ways may be good, but can overwhelm you. Like in an office environment, if you want to hide something, bury it with an information overflow. Lucky for me, I wasn't raised in the biblical tradition. I did science, philosophy, symbolism, made infant incubators, and, and teaching science. By the time I heeded my calling, I was well past the midpoint. The secret of my success is my failures. Regard reading the Torah, I would say what stands out is Deuteronomy 30, 11 to 14, which affirms that understanding it is within reach. This is reinforced in the blessing prayer recited before reading the Torah teaching, which directs us to engage in its study. To me, this makes perfect sense and reinforces my claim that both early success and celestial salvation are well within reach without further divine interventions or miracles or comings. Let me say a few words about the reasoning involved in arriving at my conclusions. My common sense is like the case of a bird that looks like a duck, walks like a duck, and quacks like a duck, most likely is a duck. I refer back to the Torah teaching passages cited and believe that there is a simplest and most likely solution. This has to be in order for ordinary folks like me to figure it out without need of sages and scholars. As enthusiasts that we creative creatures are, we should be able to figure it out on our own. My stock of things is narrow to the creation story. Contrarywise, it's learning the whole Tanakh Bible comprised of Torah, prophets, and writings, as well as others. And what's worse, an eternal dependence on sages instead of on a Adonai GD. That said, let me address the question of what is essentially wrong that impedes paradise on earth. This question of evil comes first to mind. The problem is that I simply cannot see why there, why not. There is nothing, no law of physics or of philosophy or of anything else which would be in violation if the world was good, all things considered. By this I mean that if a builder makes a house and it falls down, that doesn't mean it fell on account of evil in the world. Most likely it was poor math that went into the construction project. What I'm saying is not that regrettable things want to happen. Irving is human nature, but evil is humanity being essentially doomed is a different matter. The Torah is perfect. Human culture is perfectible, but not essentially imperfect. Accidental imperfection due to error, yes, but not essentially so, such that there's nothing that can be done about it short of a miracle of a future coming. I do believe that we can make paradise, heaven on earth, if we honest, honestly try. The Tanakh Bible is too long. Even the Torah is too long. Even the book Genesis is too long. This narrowed it down to the first one creation story in Genesis 1, 1 to 2, 3. This led me to study the Kabbalah reception to decipher the creation story. The drawback was that it required knowing the whole Tanakh. Surely, if all this low-lying fruit argument is to hold, as Holy Scripture itself affirms in Deuteronomy 30, 11, 14 above, then all that's needed should be found at the very beginning, with no need to look any further. It was, just, it, is, it was just a question of paying attention not to lose sight of the clues along the road. The problem I encountered with medieval Kabbalah ages was that it gets murky with depth. Later on, I checked my primeval version against a medieval one and it checked out fine for equivalence. I started being Newtonian, then Socratic, along the way Pythagorean and towards the end Mosaic. Having approached the crisis of civilization in a backward direction, it all made perfect sense when I encountered Kabbalah. The standard is simplicity, easiness, and beginning. Contrarywise, I'm at the mercy of sages and scholars, an unsolicited buffer between me and my creator or the creator. Just like there are mathematical principles in physics, there are hermeneutical principles in philosophy. What is the acid test for truth? What are the conditions of veracity? Is the Medusa all over again? Either you chop all its heads at once, or else you're at his mercy, beating chaos. The condition for truth is paradise, 
as triads parts PRD one whole S. To make a long story short, I will now proceed to explain what is meant by point origin, as referred to in Genesis 1 1 A Aleph, and to its application of paradise as triads parts PRD one whole S, which is the same thing as saying creation creator, respectively. The problem is that if it's not in the Torah, then it's man made, meaning made up. Unless you can prove it as a right from the Torah itself, otherwise it's not okay. But only from the Torah, not the Tanakh in general. All canonical documents arrive from the Torah teaching. The Tanakh is composed of the triad Torah, prophets, and writings. From afar, the Tanakh unfolds from the Torah. The Torah unfolds from the book of Genesis. The book of Breshit, Genesis, unfolds from the Parsha of the same name. The Parsha, Breshit, Genesis, unfolds from this opening word of the same name. The coming of the Messiah Mashiach surmise is rabbinical, made up by them, not biblical, revealed by, by G.D. to Moses at Sinai. On the other hand, only the belly button of the Torah teaching of the point origin at Genesis 1, 1 a Aleph, with its take-home message of paradise, is biblical 100%. Dumbing it down a bit with a penny analogy. The part, spiritual D, and the physical P, don't touch, being flip sides of the same coin yet are connected by the metal rim, and are going to make a trident PRD of the whole coin S. But let me be clear. Rabbinism, I object, not so rabbis. On close-up, the one creation story, Genesis 1, 1 to 2, 3, unfolds from day 1 of creation 1, 1 to 5. Day 1 unfolds from first verse, Genesis 1, 1. Genesis 1 1 unfold from the first word Breshi Genesis as origin. Genesis 1 1 a. Genesis 1 1 a Aleph virtually unfolds as point for the first letter of the alphabet A Aleph. Thus, the point origin of creation creator is Genesis 1 1 a Aleph. If each thing stands on the preceding, then all rests on the first one. There is a first one. And this first one is the beginning of the beginning, or the origin of the projection. However, since the first letter of creation actually starts with the second letter of the alphabet, Bet, B, not surprisingly, it being creation after all, as origin, we need to include the point preceding it, which not surprisingly again is the mute letter Aleph, A. Thus, in this setup, the origin as reference frame, uh, frame of reference X, Y, Z represents creation, then the point, quote, point, on which it projects would represent the Creator. Thus, Genesis 1 1 a Aleph unfolds as the point origin. This means that in order to be consistent, ultimately all would have to come from the beginning of the beginning of the beginning, namely from its point origin, Genesis 1 1 a Aleph. The problem with the broad interpretation of Bible Tanakh instead of the narrow one of the Bible Torah is that much noise is introduced, lending itself to almost anything goes. You really cannot prove or disprove it either way when data over, overpowers principles. It all falls in the gray area of plausibility. Theodicy is all in our heads with no basis in scripture due to misreading by oversight. Its disproof is in the primeval Kabbalah. Study the Torah and free yourself from external hopes to realize our potential and in the process liberate the holy book from established religion. Life is an eternal present. Any coming Messiah Mashiach making no sense is plain surmise. If GD is good, how come there's bad in the world? There isn't. It's all in our minds due to the missing point origin as the original sin misrepresentation. Life is a social edifice. It should stand upright if we do things right. Essentially, it's all right, though accidentally it may fail. Mistake is perfectly human. Evil is not. We should be busy doing our homework instead of waiting for outside help that isn't, come, isn't going to come anytime soon. Evil is in our minds, placed there by a story account of things as some people misunderstood things to be. Unable to give an account of evil, the theodicy tradition made up the original sin hypothesis. There is evil as bad things happening, but that's different from claiming original sin of humankind. Original sin and temptation as essential faults on the part of humanity is ordinary storytelling, superficial with no underlying mother rock foundations worth mentioning. For the sake of clarity, 
at least that's how I learned it back in school. If you can't make a visual of it, then you're not understanding it. The original sin hypothesis comes from the second creation story, Genesis 3, 1 to 31. But this is easily debunked by the one creation story that preceded it in Genesis 1, 1 to 2, 3. There is a first cause which we identify as Genesis 1, 1, 8, the very first word Breshit in beginning of. This is creation, but it starts with the second letter of the alphabet Beth. Therefore, preceding it must come the first one, which is Aleph, a mute letter, appropriately representing the Creator. Thus, in Genesis 1 1 A Aleph, we have Creator creation. We first identify Creator with Aleph A and within our model with a sought secret S. Next, the word Breshit in beginning of is a triad as in the beginning. R, beginning R, of P, within our model with the Raj discovered D, Remus R, and Peshat plain P. Thus, in Genesis 1 1 A Aleph, we have creator creation of point origin, and our model paradise spelling out as triad parts PRD one whole S. Since principle is about beginning, a double sense, the what is it decodes as where is it? Two for the price of one, not bad. The take-home lesson of not having a clear unifying first principle is that is the recipe for today's Tower of Babel. It's like the epicycles of an Earth-centered universe, too cumbersome, all the while a sun-centered one simplified things. Gordian knot covering our eyes, or else clarity of principle. This vein of thought will now continue addressing in the episodes that follow. Well, that's all, people. You're surely Rick, you're Charo Anusim, and GD Bless. Austin, Texas, capital of the world.